Frederick. It's very nice to have you here. Thank you for uh, joining me for this small conversation. Nice to meet you, Piotr. My, my pleasure. Yeah, so uh, maybe uh, let's start with like a small introduction. Could you introduce yourself to the public? Yeah, for sure. So I'm Frédéric Join. I'm um, an expert, let's say, in packaging uh, development. I spent more than 25 years in Danone as a R&D packaging uh, director. And before that, I have been working for the cosmetic industry as well as a packaging leader. Okay. So you have a vast experience, a long one. So I really need to ask you a little bit about Interpack because we are just in the, in the middle of Interpack 2023. And uh, so first of all, how is it to be back to this show after such a long break? Uh, it, it, that was a long break. Uh, and I, I guess this is the first uh, event uh, since uh, the pandemic. So um, it's a big pleasure for me to be here to be back here in, in Interpac. Uh, first, for me, this is an opportunity to meet the, uh, the big leaders of the packaging industry. And it was a pleasure to engage strong discussion with them on how they can see the, the, the future of the, of the industry. It's also an opportunity to see new things, uh, because as you know, uh, the things are moving when, as soon as we talk about packaging, when you talk about sustainability, circularity, productivity as well. And uh, being here, it's always a, an opportunity for me to discover new technologies, um, new design that maybe will be a big success in the future. Yeah. And uh, if you would have to compare like this edition with like, you know, past previous editions, so what is the major change? It's a difficult question because um, I spent the full day in the Interpac today. I cannot pretend to have seen everything. It's impossible. It's so big with so many people. Uh, but my, my first feeling is I really felt uh, much more engagement into circularity and sustainability and less productivity than I was expecting. So I didn't hear a lot about the inflation, for example, about productivity. But indeed, uh, circularity and, and, and sustainability seems to be something important and becoming bigger and bigger in the discussion uh, in the packaging industry today. So the weight have shifted to, to staying sustainable than, you know, just trying it to be more and more be, productive. It seems to me, but again, I'm not pretending to have seen everything. Yeah, yeah. And, but that's, that's also in line with what we see mm -hmm. generally on the market. Yeah? Uh, very good. Uh, so uh, another question I have, and it will be again related to your experience because you spent so many years uh, in the industry and this actually led you to writing a book about the future of packaging. And actually those conversations that I'm having, uh, they are all like trying to look into the future. So could you summarize uh, what your book uh, is giving us about the future? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what is the plan for in the future? Yeah, thank you for the question. So in fact, one year ago, um, that was after the pandemic, but that, that was also after in terms of context, after the raise of the plastic bashing, about all the discussion we had on too many packaging everywhere. So the end of plastic in the ocean and things like that. So I had conviction one year ago, based on the experience I had in the cosmetics and the, in the food industry on what's going to be the future of packaging, but I had some doubts. And I said the best way to make my mind would be to, to have access to experts outside of my company, Danone, and to ask them what they think about the future of packaging. And this is what I did. So I have um, defined four strategic questions. I have identified 32 experts in packaging outside from different horizons. That could be association, that could be designers, FMTG companies, um, universities, things like that. And I ask them the same four questions. And thanks to the, the, the material that I got from the interviews, I have been able to write down the book. I can tell you, I learned a lot. I got a lot of great information that I did my best to digest and to, at the end, uh, deliver the book, which is my convictions, my vision of the future of packaging. I'm not saying that it's true and that it's going to be the reality, but this is what I believe as a possible scenario. Okay, so you are projecting a specific future for this industry. So let me actually ask you a different question. So what is the number one mistake that the organizations do today that is basically stopping them from realizing that future? 
don't count on me to talk about mistake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because at the end, it's not a mistake. Because what the, the, the packaging industry is facing right now, it's a unique situation where a revolution should be done, a, trans, a full transformation of the packaging portfolio should be done that we have not done before. So it's new. The, the, I, I will not call it mistake. I would call it maybe a missed opportunity, which is about leadership inside the packaging industry, not waiting for the solution, but being able to be part of building the solution for the future. So, and I, I would recommend the, the, all, all the participants of the packaging industry is to dare to put on the table what they believe, what the future should look like. This is the first point. And the second point is being able and to dare as well to build the future together with the other partners, the upstream, the downstreams, uh, with the retailers, with the MCG, FMCG companies, with the policy makers as well. So it's about being able to build the future together and maybe to take risk at the end. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, you don't want people to wait for like a perfect situation, just being proactive and trying. This is the point. Fully, yes. fully, this is exactly the point. So don't wait for what the packaging will look like. The question is more what you want the packaging to look like for you yes. Uh, yes. As, an, as an industry, taking into account, obviously, the constraint that, for example, the regulation will set. That, that's obvious. But at the end, influencing the regulation, applying in a good way, this is the agenda that the packaging industry should have, according to me. Clear. Okay, so uh, still talking a little bit about this future. Um, now we see quite a lot of things going on in the, let's say, technological advancements. Mm. So if you would have to select like one technology that might be shaping the industry, what would it be? It's a good question. And, and before answering by the technology, I would say that the first thing to, to, to do is to really listen to the mega trends. Mega trends on the consumption from the consumers, mega trends in terms of regulations, about way to live. So this is the first element. Then we should be able to, ally, to align on what the packaging could look like. Um, and then we will talk about the technology. If I take an example, we have seen for several years the raise of reusable, refillable packaging. If at the end, maybe the one or two percent, which is today the reusable and refillable packaging, move in 10 years to 30 percent, it's going to change radically the technology that we're going to use. And the same for e-commerce. It's booming right now, more than 10 percent a year, but it's, it's the growth continue to be the same. Then it will change completely our approach to packaging. Then in terms of technology, I would say that the, 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 I do believe that uh, there is a, a push for innovation on the technology related to sorting waste and recycling materials. Already seen, but it's uh, really accelerating. The second one, which is a massive one I saw this morning in the Interpack, which is a paper-based packaging. A lot of innovation on paper-based in contact with food, and which is massive, which is super interesting. And the third one is digital. Digital means how can we implement much more digital solution in the packaging lines and maybe in the packaging to make life easier for consumers, uh, but also to manage more, uh, more um, easily the, uh, the, the, the waste management afterwards. And, and this is where I do believe that it's going to change the way we design the packaging, the way we design the packaging lines. And I do believe that Mitsubishi has a massive role to do in, 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 this, uh, in this part. So lots of factors point in the direction of creating this kind of sustainable yeah. Yeah. Uh, future, right? Yeah. So yeah. it seems this becomes top one priority, yeah. which basically fits what you said in the beginning. Huh? Exactly. Okay. And do you think that uh, manufacturing companies are prepared for this challenge? <laughs> um, I do believe that these companies have fantastic knowledge. They have the means, uh, they have the ambition to build something new, Maybe what we miss is, um, I would say, a bit of mindset to, um, to really accelerate the, what, what I call the open innovation, meaning not doing the innovation alone, but with external partners, potentially competitors. Uh, 
to really accelerate this transformation and to make it possible and big. So, Frederick, let's work together on this. Yeah. And for now, I thank you very much for thank this you. conversation. Thank you, Piotr.